You are listening to the Overthinker's Guide to Joy, episode 21. This week, I'm going to talk all about your fear of success and your fear of failure. Let's dive in. Hey there, you are listening to the Overthinker's Guide to Joy. This is a podcast for overthinkers, overachievers, perfectionists, type A, stressed out, anxious people who just want to calm down and feel better. I'm your host, Certified Life Coach Jackie DeCronis. Hey there, how are you? So this week, I thought I would talk about something that keeps coming up in my sessions and might be relatable for all of you. And that is the relationship between failure and success. And I have come to realize that they are inextricably intertwined. What I believe is the common denominator of both is actually fear. So as I was doing some research on this, I discovered that fear of failure actually has a clinical name. It's called atikophobia. And fear of success has a clinical name too, although less clinical sounding, and I'm probably going to mispronounce it, so bear with me. It's called achievemphobia. Sounds more made up than atikophobia, but nonetheless, that is the fear of success, achievemphobia. So I noticed that this pattern, this pattern of fear, fear of failure, fear of success, shows up with a lot of client consultation calls. Prospective clients would often admit to me that they hesitated to working with a coach for a variety of reasons. So one client came to me and said, I'm afraid to hire you because I think you will tell me to quit my job. And when I asked, why would I do that? They said, because I hate my job and it's killing me. (laughs) And I just responded, oh, okay. I had another client who was afraid that if he got coaching, his wife would divorce him. And when I asked why, he said, because my wife wants me to go to a traditional couples counselor and I hate our couples counselor. She's mean, she picks on me and I feel like she's totally on the side of my wife. So I'm afraid if I hire you, then she'll leave me and I can't be divorced because it will look bad in my community. I had another client who didn't want to hire me because they needed to lose weight. And when I asked them, what does that have to do with hiring me? They said, well, I want to hire you to lose weight but I'm afraid you'll tell me to go on a diet and I don't like being on a diet. So in other words, people don't want to hire a coach for fear that they might actually get what they want. Isn't it crazy how twisted our thoughts are? But let me clear up a misconception here, at least about the coaching part. Coaches don't tell clients what they want or don't want. Clients tell the coach what they want or don't want. And coaches don't tell the clients what to do or not to do. Coaches ask the clients what they want, and then we help them achieve it by creating a game plan. So this is not just semantics. It's actually a whole different ballgame. But people are afraid, and they're afraid of two things. The first thing they're afraid of is failure. They're afraid if they spend money and invest time, they might not get results. And then they basically are just accepting being stuck in whatever is bothering them, hating their job, their relationship, chronically feeling anxious or depressed, being overweight, whatever it is. And they believe that being stuck is better than failing. Yes, people would rather sit in their miserable state than risk failing, trying and being judged by themselves or others. And the second big reason people don't want to hire a coach is fear of success. Now, I know you're thinking, wait, what? How can you be both afraid of failure and success? Well, that's because the fears carry a lot of the same traits. People who fear failure are afraid of being judged. People who fear success are afraid of being judged too or they're afraid people might be jealous of them and that they might lose friends, or they're afraid that if they're successful, there will be too much pressure to keep it up, which is secretly just a fear of failure. And the last thing is 
People are afraid if they succeed and they're still not happy, there's nowhere else to turn. So by not trying to succeed, they ensure staying miserable. And once again, there's comfort in being miserable because at least it's familiar. So many years ago, long before I was a coach, I had a dear friend who was very overweight, not kind of overweight or subjectively overweight, but clinically overweight. And she needed to lose somewhere between 125 and 150 pounds. And the interesting thing was that she was really beautiful, kind, smart, and successful. She was married with kids, had a beautiful home, a great career, money in the bank, all the things. And she had a million friends. She liked to travel and attend parties. She was one of my favorite people in the whole world. And she never complained about her weight or being uncomfortable. If she suffered, she suffered in silence. But it was actually her doctors who were very concerned about her health. And her weight was a big issue in her marriage too. So she finally joined a weight loss program. And in less than a year, she lost 110 pounds. She was so close to her goal weight. And she looked and felt amazing. Her husband, friends, family, co-workers all supported her and celebrated her commitment to her transformation. But as she got closer and closer to her goal weight, she slowly started falling off the wagon. She stopped being careful with her diet and the weight slowly but surely all came back. And months went by and I asked her in a private moment why she gave up on her goal. And she told me that all the attention and the compliments about her new body and her new appearance made her very uncomfortable. So she just basically went back to what she knew, eating for comfort and hiding in her bigger body. She was more comfortable being comfortable in her discomfort. I know that's kind of a tongue twister, but it was the devil she knew, and that's where she stayed. And I only tell you that anecdote because it stayed with me about why people self-sabotage, why people who kind of have everything, and then there's this one thing they want, don't want that. It's almost like this fail-safe of failure, that it feels good to have a flaw, or it feels good to struggle, or it feels good to just be uncomfortable about something. And that usually stems from feeling not deserving a success, even though this woman had success in all other facets of her life, but not with her body and not ultimately with her health. So success and failure are the same side of the coin. People fear both and they are often confused. And some people don't bother trying for fear of failing, like I said, and being judged. And other people get close to success and then self-sabotage because like I just told you, it's too uncomfortable feeling different or getting attention they don't think they deserve. Both of these conditions, failure and success, are just thoughts. But how do we control or corral our thoughts? Well, the first step is to bring them into the light. Whether you hire a therapist or a hypnotherapist or a coach or do it on your own, it's important to get these thoughts out. It's important to examine where did they come from? Where did the fear of failure or success come from? What stories were you told as a child? Did someone tell you that you would never amount to anything? Or were you led to believe that you were destined to fail? Or did someone tell you that if you were successful, that other people would be jealous of you, resent you, or try to harm you? These stories, voices, tapes in your head, whatever you want to call them, they came from a moment in time when you were probably at an impressionable age, or it might have been something that you just heard over and over again. If you listened to my podcast on money a few weeks ago, you know that these old beliefs can often be inherited or drilled into us by a family member or a mentor, maybe not a good one, but some kind of leader in your community where you were told information and then you believed it to be gospel. It's our job to challenge those limiting beliefs and write a new chapter of our story. Just because someone told you something or some kind of family belief 
was cemented into your upbringing. That does not seal your fate. You're in charge of your own narrative. You're in charge of your success. And it's your job to accept failure as part of the journey. Embracing failure as part of the journey rather than fearing it will keep you from quitting on yourself. Keep telling yourself there is no success without failure. It's like the saying goes, the first pancake is always burnt. It requires trial and error to get the temperature just right. And the same goes for your business. The same goes for love. The same goes for everything. Experience is our teacher. Failure is our teacher. And the most successful people in the world have had epic failures before becoming wildly successful. As Ariana Huffington said, failure is not the opposite of success. It's part of success. And as Woody Allen was once quoted saying, success is 80% showing up. So I'm going to leave you with a series of questions. Where is fear holding you back? If you knew you could not fail, what would you do? Where in your life would you make a change? And just remember this, it is never too late to make a change. And it is never too late to be successful. Once again, I want to thank you for listening. I look forward to talking to you next week. Have a great week and bye for now. If you want to learn more tips about managing your stress and how to manage your overthinking brain, just go to my website and sign up for my weekly newsletter at JackieDecrenis.com. That's J-A-C-K-I-E. D-E-C-R-I-N-I-S dot com. You can also follow me on Instagram at Jackie DeCrenis. Thank you for listening to this episode of Overthinker's Guide to Joy. If you like what was offered in today's episode, I would love you to leave a review and subscribe or follow wherever you get your podcasts.